Hey everyone, Joel Tremblay here, and I have an exciting project to share today. This lighting in here kind of sucks, so let's go outside. It's a beautiful day out today, so might as well go outside and uh, give you an update here. Go outside. Come on, let's go. Come on. Diesel trucks running around. Right. Yeah. Get that bird. Yeah, I've been working with Jay Simmons, a fellow YouTuber, someone who I admire very much and been watching every single one of his videos. I've been collaborating with him and his partners who bought the island property on Lake of the Woods in Kenora. So that video was posted about three months ago. At that time, I figured I'd send an email and reach out, you know, see how I could offer my services and my expertise. Expertise. So I sent Jay an email and he responded and said, yeah, let's make something work. And so that's where the ball kind of got rolling. I explained to him my interest and passion for designing things in the north, especially off-grid in remote areas. You can see my off-grid trailer chuck box there that I built. Uh, and there's a whole series of videos uh, on my channel about that. And being a designer, I really wanted to be able to show them what I could offer in my skills and help them envision the project that they've always wanted. And because this project is gonna be built, it's gonna cost them quite a bit of money. Uh, I really wanted to help them out and envision the spaces that they needed and the kind of the building that they were thinking and proposing to build. So after that, I not only got connected with Jay, I uh, spoke a lot with Scott and Spencer, who are the core three people uh, partners on this project. And then there are a few other team members that joined. I'm sorry, I can't name everyone who helped on the project because I, I just can't remember and I wasn't in the loop on everything. Kyle and Mark, uh, thank you for your help and uh, I'm excited to see you guys. Because this project is on an island, you have to be very careful about materials, quantities of everything. You can't just run to the home hardware and uh, buy another two by four. Um, we had to really make sure that the design was tight and uh, that everything was accounted for. We had other restrictions and limitations to work to. Basically, the design of the cabin itself is made to fit on a barge. So the design is very simple in the sense that it's a 32 by 25 foot box. We really tried to maximize the space utility, but also create something that is worthwhile and enjoyable to be in. Two story space, kind of great room area. Uh, would be really nice to host um, families and people coming and then offer a great view of the lake. Additionally, the idea for an open concept kitchen was uh, kind of necessary in terms of like doing catch and cook and other uh, you know social cooking events. Um, being able to have that open to the living and uh, eating environment I think was important. That concept was well received with everyone and we all agreed on that. Um, the exact arrangement of the appliances and stuff may change. Uh, we haven't completely nailed that down yet. All right, so I started off designing the project like I do every project, just kind of pen and paper. Scott and Spencer and Jay had a uh, little bit of a layout already thought of and a square footage that they wanted to work to. And so the design that you see is a resolved uh, layout that has been figured out over a course of a number of revisions. And then I brought it into Revit, which is an architectural software that allows me to draw plans, elevations, sections. And so this cabin is planned to be really well insulated. Uh, because we're in Northern Ontario, you know, it is required to be well insulated. And so the roof lines are designed with a pre-eng truss system. Hi dog. We had to go back and forth with the truss engineers multiple times uh, because we really needed something that could fit on the barge, but also something that would be easily assembled on site. Because this is going on a barge, it had to fit on the barge but then there was limitations to the sizes of the trusses that can fit out the door of the actual factory. Finally, we were able to find a design that worked. Uh, so that has also been ordered. And then also Kyle Zeller was able to provide cut sheets, drawings that were able to quantify how many studs we needed, the wall shapes where the windows were going and everything. So that was really nice to have, really quantify everything that we needed for this project. We also plan to have a wood burning fireplace installed. There's also a complete off-grid solar system. We're gonna have a couple of 100 pound propane tanks to run the refrigerator and the stove. And also a small unit heater to keep the place at ambient temperature throughout the four seasons. And this is gonna be controlled via a smart thermostat uh, via Wi-Fi, so it can be controlled remotely. So either Jay, Scott, or Spencer uh, can see on their phones whenever one of the tanks are getting low, they can you know, bring them back to get filled up or swap one out for the other. That along with this complete solar setup and the Starlink, uh, this is gonna be you know, the cat's meow off-grid fishing outpost. And so I'm really excited to uh, share with you guys this project and be part of such an awesome team and meet all these awesome people who are truly passionate about the outdoors and just to see people who uh, really care about building off-grid and in a sustainable manner. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the animation I put together. This, the animation is really to celebrate the uh, the project and uh, kind of give a visual idea of what the layout is going to look like. Again, so these are uh, 3D model renderings. They're very abstract and so the finishes aren't exact and everything isn't finalized. 
but uh, it gives you an idea of let's say the environment and uh, the finishes and everything of, of how uh, we envision this project to look like in the end. Renderings yeah. are amazing. How long did those renderings take Thanks. to make? Once you kind of build the model, it, it doesn't take that long. Yeah, but it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's over, like it was over 50 hours of rendering. Um, so you so had to have it of, running overnight sort of thing? Yeah. All that yeah. Uh, in terms of like coming up with the plans and stuff, it's, you know, it takes time to, you know, as, t as time goes on, you, you do some revisions and whatnot and back yeah. and forth together came and created this design that I think it's 850 square feet or just below 800 square feet internally uh, with a one bedroom and a loft, a sleeping loft above. And uh, yeah, we're uh, I'm really excited to see this this get built and put together. Uh, it was a lot of fun to put together. It was cool to see like the, the, the raw blueprints, but like the renderings you did were so cool. Like just seeing it, you know, more in its setting and and the potential of, of what it actually is going to be kind of like gives you, it, feel, it feels like you're there from what you did. So the, the island is on Lake of the Woods. Yep. The Big Narrows. Um, I think I got one little pin drop uh, from Scott, so I kind of located it. And yeah. uh, what kind of fishing do you guys have there? I mean, it's kind of in the epicenter of everything. I mean, Lake of the Woods is so cool because it's got it's got lake trout, it's got muskies, it's got walleyes, it's got smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, crappies, pike. I think I said walleyes, maybe sauger, whitefish, ciscos, burbot, lake sturgeon. Yeah, like uh, like uh, all, all the main species that you find around here. And it's, it's such a cool lake because you know, you go to the north end and it's like clear water. You go to the south end, it's muddy. In the middle, kind of where our cabin is, or is going to be, is going to be kind of that modern, kind of like stained water. But yeah, it's cool. I, I like the location too, because it's like kind of split between the Northwest Angle and Kenora. Northwest Angle being like the Minnesota part of Lake of the Woods. So it's kind of cool. You can access it from different spots. It's about a 20, I think like a 20 mile boat ride approximately from, from town. So it's, oh, yeah. you know, it's not close by any means, but um, it's not insane. It's not a two hour boat ride to get there. So it's, it yeah, will be off yeah. grid, but not, you know, like we'll have internet, we'll have all that stuff in case, you know, yeah. an emergency. Do you have any service happen. there as is? You'd probably get like spotty cell service, but we yeah. like the first thing we ordered for the lodge was Starlink. So we've nice. had Starlink for a couple months already. We've been paying for a subscription, even though it's not hooked yeah, up. Yeah, they, uh, they, like as soon as you get the box in the mail, like the, you start, they start charging for. you. But yeah, so that'll be exciting to have that up. You'll have faster internet than you do at home probably. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good hike up, but you know, perfect for like weekend getaways and uh, to actually disconnect from country, I guess. Yeah, I think there's just something that feels a little different. Uh, yeah. You know, when you boat into a location versus driving to a location, it is exactly. it is more work, definitely more work. But once you're there, it's it's pretty cool. Like you're not hearing vehicles ripping by, you're hearing you know the odd boat and stuff. But uh, it's definitely a different a different type of vacation. And uh, yeah, you're you're in the woods. I mean, and, and as much as it's a fishing spot too, it's going to be an incredible base camp for for hunting. Oh, and, uh, yeah, yeah. I've always woods. dreamed of yeah. owning a place on Lake of the Woods. And now I don't think it'd be feasible to do by myself. But having you know Scott and Spencer to do it together with, they've got a lot more experience with the, the building side of stuff. So I'm just I'm just happy to to be part of that. And yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait till we can share with other people. At this time next year, I want to potentially have people staying there ready. So yeah, and so is the goal to have like. I guess like events or, or things 
have people up, guests up and, and kind of. Yeah, like it'll be different levels. Like I think I think for a lot of the time we envision it being kind of a do-it-yourself outpost camp. So, you know, boat in with a couple buddies and uh, family, whatever you want, fish the area and, and kind of do it yourself, cook your own meals, be on your own schedule. That's what I like as an angler. But I mean, we, Spencer, one of the partners on the project, he's a fishing guide. So it's like, there'll be potentially when we have a, you know, a, a, we might have like a prospector tent set up there or a, a second smaller, you know, cabin for if we want to stay out there, then, you know, you could hire Spencer to guide you for the day and that sort of thing. But then we also want to do like bigger events. I've kind of been brainstorming potentially at some point doing like a kid's fishing camp or with my, with my buddy, Josh McFadden, we have a, a fish batter company called catch and cook. And we thought about doing like a, a catch and cook getaway. Yeah. Perfectly placed. In the back right? placement. Yeah. yeah. So we thought about doing, yeah, maybe we could do like camp catch and cook getaway. So like, I want to do events there too, you know, in the future, if this works out and, you know, make some of our investment back, we'd love to build a second cabin on the property. We'll start with one and see where it goes. Yeah, so they're kind of creating like a like a fishing wonderland type, yeah, you know, establishment, little base camp. You know, I think I think with the where the location is, we're not exactly sure if we're gonna like it's not the place you would come and stay one night. I think it would be no. like a minimum. For, we still need to figure out some of these things yet. Um, but either either it'll be it'll, it'll, it'll be a minimum like three nights or maybe even like a five night minimum stay, just because by the time you boat down the lake and deal with all that stuff and for us to get cleaners down there and everything, it you know it doesn't do anyone justice to have it for a couple of days. So yeah. I think and know, I think a lot of people too, uh, I imagine would be traveling far away yeah. for like to experience this place, and so they would be doing it just for a night yeah. or so. Like it'd be, you know, it, it'd be like a vacation. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really cool tying that in with like the youth um, and then just being able to show them how this is off-grade, which is so important to Northern yeah. Ontario, you know, like like having the next next generation coming up, understanding that it's important to, to build sustainably and you can still do everything you want to do out in the remote wilderness. It's just, yeah. you know, you just need to exploit your technology. I, I, absolutely. And that, and that was built like cabins are going to be built. That That isn't yep. going to be stopped. But can you, you know, first off, teach people you know, about sustainable harvest with fishing, with proper catch and release. And I mean, that's something that I, I, I don't want this lodge to be about, hey, you're going to bring home bags full of frozen fish. That's not it. Yeah. I want people to come there, have your shore lunches, enjoy, enjoy the resources, just not make it all about catching, catching your limits and killing as many fish as possible. And then as well, just like not, not leaving a bunch of garbage and like, you know, cleaning up after yourself yeah, and place. solar energy, all that stuff. I, th- I think there's just lots to be said for that and to be an example for other people, you know, building cabins or spending time in the outdoors. So, I mean, I, that, that's really a big focus. Yeah. thing that's small that people can enjoy, you know, my one of my favorite places on earth, but then also, you know, can come out of it being like, hey, maybe I can do better, create my cabin being off, you know, a solar type thing. Yeah, that's, and uh, that's really the main reason that I kind of reached out originally, really interested in, uh, and it's, it's not something we see a lot of, especially in like places like Northern Ontario, where there's, yeah. there's a lack of, uh, let's say, sensibility to building off grid. And yeah. because it's, you know, in our day age, it's like, it's a little bit more expensive. You're paying a premium for some of the stuff, but like the, the life cycle of materials and the stuff that you're investing in has such a, a better return value, I guess. Well, and with the, the price of, of the thing. Yeah. Yeah. With the price of gas and stuff with generators and all that, like, yeah, yeah. you are, you're paying, you are paying up front. And I mean, I haven't crushed the numbers personally, but you, you hope that, you know, beyond it being good for the environment, that it also pays off in the end because you know harvesting you know solar solar energy is definitely yeah. you know a great way to go about it well it's nice to talk to you again no man yeah it's, it's yeah. been good i know I've, I've been like i know you've been talking to scott a lot and i since november it's been absolute madness i've been traveling so much i got one more trip and then i'm just hunkering down until the baby comes i'm uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to being being home for a bit it's been busy busy and then and then focusing on you know the build and all this the supplies drop getting dropped off were, were su- was super exciting so having mark on as the manager is going to help it's going to help so much we wouldn't we wouldn't be on pace if it wasn't for him well thanks for taking the time to kind of no problem thanks for everything you've done it's been, it's, it's been amazing and i i'm looking forward yeah. to you coming up and seeing it and everything yeah, yeah so i'll be coming up in june and i'll me and a couple of buddies will, will help put together the the cabin and uh hopefully do some fishing and absolutely it'll be nice to meet the team in person yeah. oh yeah that'll be good